Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm talking about doing operations on our optic. So like in the book, I'm going to go ahead and create two variable. Cleverly named number one and number two. Okay. So these next few operations are going to be like you'd expect, but still worth talking about. So the plus sign does a distance. The minus sign. If you type it. The subtraction. The multiplication sign. Surprisingly does multiplication. And division sign. Division. Okay. We also have logical argument. So, number one equal number one. That's true. This double equal sign test is what on the left is equal to the thing on the right. Doesn't have to be a number, it could be a character value, it could be cat equal equal cat. That's still true. Okay. So these two, I've tried them and I'm not entirely sure what's going on with them. I'm not gonna talk about them. They do evaluate the way, the, the way I say, but if you think the numbers, it gets kind of weird. I don't know why. So I'm going to actually try to avoid talking about those two. Possibly it, it was through in an older version of R. I'm not too sure. Okay. So we have the greater than sign. Here I say number one is greater than number two. And you can see that clearly through. 45 greater than 21. We have the less than sign. So I'm going to switch the order to make this evaluate as true. Okay. If 21 is less than 45, that's obviously true. We also have uh, greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. I'm not going to bother doing that. It's the same thing greater than or less than, but you also have the possibility of equal to. If it's also equal to, it will evaluate the drill. Actually, I will, I'll do one of them. It's not the most exciting, but let's do it. Okay, evaluating the true, we got number one is equal to number one. Okay, and then we have not equal to. So if the two things in here are not equal to each other, it evaluates the true, and the not equal to each other, and of course it didn't evaluate as true. Okay. So we also have the double percent sign, and that is the remainder after the fission. So, 3 goes into 9 3 times, no remainder. 5 goes into 9 once, with a remainder of 4. And that's what we get, the 4. Okay. So, if you need a remainder of the fitting, obviously that's where you go. Okay, now we're moving on to two-dimensional objects. I'm going to make this example matrix. Matrix. Okay. 
Oh, that's not one through nine, that's uh, one nine times. I thought that was sequence, but nope, that's one nine times. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And call equal three. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and print this matrix. And it's a very exciting matrix of one. Although I didn't need to do that, I could have not had the number one there. Oh no, I did need to do that. So if I hadn't done that, I would have had to say in call and in row equal to three. That it would have been a fine option too, but that's what I went with in the book. Okay, so we can do element wise multiplication by the three times the sample matrix and it just multiplies every element by three so now we have matrix of three okay we can also do matrix multiplication go ahead and map one matrix our norm 12 in call 3 and then mat 2 it's going to be a matrix field with random number it's off though but the dimension are going to be off What I mean by that is the row here, the, here there's four rows, three columns, and this is going to be oh yeah, three rows, four columns. Goodness, I'm slipping. Okay. So what we don't want to do here in with Matrix multiplication is to use the multiplication symbol alone. Matrix multiplication here requires that you use the special matrix multiplication operator and then we get what we want. Okay. Okay, so you can also use the the apply function to get uh, mean, variance, standard deviation, column wise or row wise. So I'm gonna go ahead and print matrix one to be comparable to what I have done in the book. Okay, so one is the clap for each row. So it's going to be the mean of this row, mean of this row, mean of this row, and then mean of this row. Well, actually, when I do it, it's going to be the mean of this row, but you get what I mean. So apply the name of the matrix. So that one. The margin basically do we want to do by row to column one is saying apply this function to every row and the next argument is the actual mean not not mean function and here it's going to be mean okay now we have four values one for each row of this matrix okay and we can do it the other way. Mat one, comma two, comma mean. So the thing we named here is that we're doing columns instead of rows now. That's the mean of the first column, mean of the second column, mean of the third column. Okay. We can also do the same thing with sum in SD, it doesn't have to be mean. It, 
and we can do it with custom function. We can give the name of any function. Okay, so to wrap up, I want to give you a, uh, a warning here. So, using graphing calculators, we have become accustomed to writing formulas in a certain way. So, oh goodness, okay, there we are, so we got 4 plus 2. This will run, that's not a problem at all. If you try to do this, with what graphing calculators have set us up to do, it's going to be very mad. It said attempt to apply non-function, and what that means is it's treating that 5 as if it were a function, and that's absolutely not what you want. And likewise, like I say in the book, this work. But taking out that multiplication sign, which is implied to us, will do the same thing. Attempt to apply non-function. So that's just something to keep in mind. I've felt the temptation to do th this, and it is wrong, and it will fail an error. And hopefully you haven't written too much code to where you don't notice that. Okay, that's my cat. <laughs> okay, so in the next video, I'll be talking about installing and librarying packages. Thank you for watching the video.